assumptions. With a big picture perspective, they're all easily understandable as individual shadows of one whole thing, and one can see where and how each got stuck because of their limiting beliefs. And all of these things do get stuck because of their limiting beliefs. Okay. Many of our best philosophers and scientists do accurately see a portion of the big picture. Few have seen the whole picture because they lack the necessary personal experience with an understanding of consciousness. Many, like Einstein, Bohm, and Wigner, knew that consciousness was involved. They just didn't know how. Many successful seekers and enlightened individuals have seen the big picture. You know, for an example, have you ever read uh, Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching? Well, if you have, and if you have experience in the big picture, you'll know that Leo obviously had been there and done that. It rings true. What he says is very accurate description. But it's one of these things where, unless you've been there, it's hard to tell that. And if you don't have any experience, you read it and you go, huh? What is he talking about? It doesn't make any sense. After you've been there, you say, I get it. Yes, that's right. He's been there and done that. Well... Most of people who do have experience do end up agreeing. Often there's differences in, in uh, belief systems, differences in expression, differences in uh, the way they perceived it. But if you get through all of that stuff on the surface and get at what's underneath, you recognize it. We all pretty much see the same thing. And why is that? Because this is one truth. You know, what's true is true. It's not like... There's lots of different truths. There's lots of different expressions of truth. And they, they're all valid. But there's just one truth. So people who actually are seeing the truth ought to agree on what it is that they're seeing. Okay, Fredkin and his uh, digital physics, they're essentially correct too. Right? The reality is basically computed. He just didn't realize that consciousness was the computer. David Deutsch, many worlds. Okay? He's basically right. There are many worlds. It's just they don't exist as parallel physical places. They're probabilistic, non actualized. They're in the database. Future, past history thread, or past unactualized. There are many worlds. And you can access these worlds. And everything that can happen is there as a probability distribution. So David Deutz has got that correct. He just doesn't understand the nature of consciousness. Again, you can't unless you experience it. Nick Bostrom, Brian Whitworth, um, Edward Fredkin, all of them talked about virtual reality being uh, computed reality. It's just, it's so, that's true. It's just not as they imagine it. They all miss the consciousness connection because they don't have a personal understanding of the nature of consciousness. And a personal understanding is the only kind of understanding that creates fundamental knowing. Again, you can't handle the subjective objectively. Okay, for the most part, when I tell you about these things, I'm not speculating. Believe that or not, that's true. I speak with confidence only because I've been there, and by experiment, and by experience, I've learned the causality of the larger system. Okay, logical implications. What about paranormal phenomena? What are they and why are they so hard to, to, to nail down? Well, they are glimpses of the larger reality, but they don't make sense from the limited viewpoint of this reality. Remember, you can't understand the big picture if you only look with knowledge inside the little picture. Can't do that. So why are they so difficult to study? It's because we're forcing little picture causality on them. Basically, we demand that these paranormal things, which are, which are um, events of the larger reality, be explained and described physically. We say the non-physical has to be described physically because, you know, the physical is all there is. That's it. You know, we only have this universe. Nothing else exists. So if these things exist, you have to be able to explain them physically. It doesn't work. These are, these are things that happen. They're glimpses of the, of the larger reality frame. You cannot explain them physically. It doesn't work. The little subset can't explain the big superset. 
All right, now there's also a thing called the psi uncertainty principle that limits understanding of, of psi to some extent. You, you have to read the book to understand that, but uh, basically what it is is part of our rule set, and it's there to keep the integrity of our learning lab intact. You wouldn't want uh, the effectiveness of the learning lab to disappear, which it would otherwise, and we'll talk about that a little later, but uh, there are rules that prohibit uh, or actually what it does is add an uncertainty to psi things. It requires a certain amount of uncertainty to go with them. All right, uh, logical in implications here. Psi phenomena such as remote viewing, healing, um, out-of-body experiences, exploring, non-physical uh, matter reality, communicating with non-physical beings, telepathy. All these things are natural attributes of, are accessible to a low entropy consciousness. This is the extra power you get by lowering your entropy. Remember, extra power that you can do things with and can change things with comes with lower entropy, with more organization. One develops a low entropy consciousness by eliminating belief, eliminating fear and ego, and by expanding one's awareness into the bigger picture of existence. That is, by developing oneself spiritually is another way of saying that. All right, we're going to hit uh, the science certainty principle, just the first bullet. Okay, basically I've told you it's part of the PMR rule set. It represents an entanglement of uncertainty with the measurement of psi effects. Okay, so if you and a few of you get together and you can do some wonderful things, you can do healing, you can do other kinds of things, but what you do kind of stays there. It doesn't, there's a certain amount, from the outside view, from others who aren't part of your circle, particularly skeptical others or scientific others, they come in, there's a lot of uncertainty. Oh, you know, you cheat, you're making it up, you know, you have, you know, you've arranged all this. There's something about it that makes it okay not to believe it. And it'll always be that way. There's always uncertainty involved with what you experience. That's part of the, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the process. Okay, let's go on. Okay, logical implications. What about teleporting? You get around. Well, you know, what does teleporting mean? Basically, in this sense, teleporting is just changing your focus. You get this data stream, you get that data stream, you get a different data stream, you do that with your intent. That's really teleporting. When I go visit a, another, say, a diff, another physical reality, that just means another virtual reality that's constrained enough that it kind of has the, the nature of being physical. Basically, I can go there as an observer, in which case, it's like I'm looking at the movie. I, I can interact with the beings there. I can talk and interact. I usually do that at a, at a level of what would be called their higher consciousness, so they're not aware of it. I can do it so they are aware of it, and if I do that, then they are aware of me as either a voice in their head or it's their own thoughts, their own intuition. If I like, I can produce a body there and walk around and be one of the local people and interact with them that way. Uh, you can have your choice of those kinds of things. Now, obviously, if I can do that there, you know, they can do that here, right? It's not just a one-way street. But there are very few entities that are able to do this, so it doesn't happen very often. It's easy to teleport your awareness about the larger consciousness system. It's very easy. And you can go much further than just the non-physical that interacts with our system. That's just a tiny little piece of that non-physical virtual reality that has any interaction with any being here in this physical matter reality. Um, it's easy to generate a body in another frame. It's all just data. It's just a matter of generating the data that when that data goes into their consciousness, they see a physical body. It's, it's, um, it's easier than it sounds.